The Small Business Show, episode 199 for Wednesday, November 28th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business. Here today in Midtown Manhattan, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I am uh, traveling, but uh, but all <laughs> yeah. well, all is well. That's yeah, it's good. Right on. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I just left uh, Manhattan. It was great. You know, I left California and it was uh, covered with smoke. And now I come back and that's uh, we're getting some rain, so it's fantastic. Hey, that's I'm a good thing about that. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, so it's always a good thing. So uh, this is great. Um, and you know, it's was, it was interesting. I never see. I've never seen so many people concerned about California as when I was out in uh, Manhattan last week. So it was great that uh, every, we were all talking about the, the yeah. fires and everything. I'm glad yeah. those things are, are, are wrapped up out here. But today we're going to talk about technology. You know, we're both have been in the technology business in one form or another for many, many years. Uh, we, we both know how quickly the hardware changes and. Uh, all the problems you have to deal with with finding a home. What do you do with your old laptop, your iPhone, your iPad or tablet? Um, it's ironic you. you mentioned that. Yeah. This is the last it podcast is. I'm going to record on this old MacBook Air here. So the there new one's go. on its way. Yep. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I have a, a drawer with some old iPhones in it, uh, a couple of MacBooks sitting in my uh, garage, I'm sure. So today we get a chance to learn more about the business opportunity that the, this type of situation creates with our guest, Brian Burke, owner of SellYourMac.com. Thanks for joining us today, Brian. For having me on, guys. Yeah, we're really happy to hear you. Sounds, so, sounds like good timing that you have a MacBook Air. You're going to be selling here in a few short, few short I know. days. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. you can, yeah. uh, maybe you can advise me on what to do with it, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's fascinating. It, 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 that's for sure. And one of the things I just brought a new uh, MacBook Pro out to my daughter when I was out in New York and brought her old one back. So it's uh, it is it is good timing. So Brian, let's but talk for a few minutes. You guys are all Apple. Yeah, of course. Friends. Yeah, absolutely. That's the value. Uh, you know, I've been in the hardware business forever, and that's definitely the the market that's you know, better to be in. Um, so let's talk for a few minutes about how you got started. Uh, you know, why did you did you start sell your Mac? How, what, what's the story that led you to uh, you know to get the company up and running? Kind of quick backstory is is I didn't get the job I wanted out of college. I really wanted to be a stock trader at a big hedge fund or investment bank in New York. Didn't get the job right away, so I came back home. And what better way to get some cash than to sell some stuff on eBay? I had I'd done a lot of eBaying during my college years for my friends because they were too lazy to sell their stuff. So I charged them a commission and sell it for them. So I had quite quite the knack at the uh, selling game on eBay. So it was you know easy for me to get involved there at a deeper level level kind of right off the bat and that was my outbound but trying to get more product to sell was really the problem at the time and i had built up a network of people that were uh, working for verizon and basically collecting phones back then from customers because there weren't many trading programs so at first i started buying all these phones off the verizon reps and that was great but I truly am not that passionate about the phone market itself. My passion lied with Apple. So when I saw an opportunity to buy a bunch of Apple product. That is when I kind of had the idea that I need to start focusing on Apple. You know, the customers that buy Apple products are always happy. It's a great market to work in, you know, great company and they make great products. And you know, I started uh, for about a year or so just buying or selling Apple products on eBay, not having any truly inbound uh, sales channel. And that's when I had the idea for SellYourMac.com. I needed a way to get more product and to give people cash back on a consistent basis online. So I made a really easy website and form people to navigate, tell me the product and specs they had, find out instantly what the product was worth, and then send it in. That's that's killer. So l l let me ask you a question about this business model because I'm always fascinated uh, with it. Because um, I've often thought about you know setting something like that, and I know there's a lot of challenges involved. Um, how do you offset the, the you know the customer that says, "Well, you're not going to give me as much as I can get," you know, selling it on my own? I mean, it must be a constant battle with the the perceived value of an item versus what you're able to pay for it and process it and all that kind of thing. 
It's definitely a very key challenge. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I think years ago we used to try to combat that, you know, much more often than we do now. We're not really trying to convince people at this point if to be a customer, if they don't understand the value we're providing, that we're going to save people so much time, hassle, and ultimately money if they value their time. Um, so to kind of you know kind of break it down, like you said, I mean, there's so many of these other costs that go into you know running the business, not just the overhead and the rent, it's all the team members, all the uh, technology behind the business, you know, keeping the website up, all that stuff. So yeah, there's a there's a huge cost to that. Um, but you know, fortunately we've always been able to, to get the good customers that under, understand the value prop that we provide that, you know, it, you know, let's say you're only going to get uh, 200 on eBay and we're offering you a hundred dollars, but a hundred dollars of your time could be spent answering questions, dealing with the shipping. And ultimately you might end up being scammed online. And uh, at that point you're out, you know, all your money or your product. So this is a much safer hassle-free way to cash in your goods and not spend time doing it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're selling safety and convenience, right? I know that I just put it in a box and forget about it and you send me a check and that's the end of it. Ask us how they can trust us. And I, you know, we point to the tens of thousands of five-star reviews we have online. And it's seemingly hard to believe that someone wouldn't put trust in that, but some people out there uh, are never going to be a customer so they can sell the products themselves. There's certainly a lot of places they can do that. Yep. Sure. That makes sense. Okay. I want to go back a little bit uh, again, when you were just starting uh, sell your Mac and I read up on on your website and and as you commented here, weren't able to get to the, you know, the job that you really were looking for. You know, we have a lot of listeners that are at that critical stage of moving from uh, Dave and I always call it, you know, employee to employer, uh, you know, somebody that's trying to start the business, what was the toughest part of that transition uh, from, you know, working for somebody else or getting a paycheck at some point and then, you know, going striking out on your own? Uh, if you could talk about that, that'd be great. I haven't worked for very many other people. I had some summer jobs in high school, but out of college, I just ran right at this opportunity to have my own eBay store and, and grow that market. So there wasn't really much of a transition for me. You know, I kind of bit the bullet and dove right in. I didn't have a backup plan. I think that's one of the kind of key things. Yeah. If you have this huge safety net and backup plan, chances are you aren't going to be as gung ho and go all in. And the amount of time that takes to start a business is is incredible. And if you're not willing to put in put in that effort on the front end, there's no way you're going to have success in the back end unless you're just incredibly lucky. So it's really you know bite the bullet, throw the safety net out, and you know go for it. And if you have if you're truly passionate about the business you're in, there's a great chance it's going to be successful. Yeah, it's I true. Love, I love I, that. Yeah, I, I was I had that same thought just driving in the car today, like. You know, there's there's people out there that have backup plans, and for me, th- like I do my backup plan every day. Th- that's what I do for a living. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've always done for a living. But I know Love that it. I could do. You know, I would come up with another thing to do if if this didn't work out, right? You know, there's always you, you learn to trust yourself, and that's the best backup plan to have, right? Is yeah, you you are the backup plan. I'm right? the backup plan. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's all I got. That's a great point. Yep. Yeah, you, you're not only relying on yourself; you're not relying on an employer. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and and you know, I, I mean, I, we say this as employers, but. Um, and it's not great when our employees listen and, and hear us say this, but you, you can't really rely on an employer, right? Anything could change. And, and, you know, in most States it's employment at will. So you're better off relying on yourself. So, except the people that work for me know how much they can rely on me. <laughs> of so, course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah well, you but, build the, the culture, but yeah, you build the culture uh, and trust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's a really good point is the backup plan and that the risk. And I always tell people, you know, it's like, oh, all these risks you've taken. It's like, well, you know, it's it's a risk depending on someone else to give you a paycheck every couple of weeks and, you know, build a career with a company that may, you know, take a different course that doesn't include you. So that's a that's a risk as well. Um, so, OK, Brian, so you're. Uh, you're selling Apple devices online. You have a retail location, I, I believe. And, and I think, you know, you mentioned selling on eBay. Um, talk, if you can, about how, uh, about each of those channels, like your retail store versus marketplaces like eBay, Amazon. Uh, what's what's the best, what's worked the best for you, maybe with some of the pitfalls of that, that kind of stuff? 
So we do have a few different markets we plan. We do have the retail store, as you mentioned, locally here in greater Cincinnati. And our biggest selling channel is still eBay. Oh, nice. And you know, we, we started off that way and we focused so much of our effort on that channel that we have you know, a very large number of trusted reviews. And you know, right now we have 100% positive feedback and more than 33,000 reviews. So that is one of the reasons why we stay on that stay on that platform is that the trust we built up helps really drive, drive the sales. Um, we do do some Amazon. And one of the things happening with Amazon, if anyone out there has heard, is that Apple is partnered with them now and there's gonna be no more third party uh, resellers unless you're right. authorized yeah so that was kind of big news and i'm glad that we have a very small percent of our revenue on there because yeah. that could be uh, detrimental to many businesses <laughs> sure well, that's a great argument for multiple channels you know because things change all the time right all right guys hey i want to take a minute here and talk about our first sponsor which is text expander you know I know both Shannon and I couldn't run our lives, let alone our businesses, without Text Expander. What Text Expander does is it lets you take a large block of text, be it, uh, it could be an address, it could be an email address, but it could be a huge long email response complete with spots for forms to be filled in and you save it and then you invoke it with a short keystroke. And that way, A, you don't have to type it, and B, you don't have to worry about fat fingering something while you're typing it. Text Expander handles it for you. The cool part is you can sync all of these Text Expander snippets with your team. So all your team's common responses are accessible and searchable through simple abbreviations and keyboard shortcuts written and edited by your best writers, not necessarily the people that are delivering the responses, but the people in your organization that have the best writing ability. It's available on multiple platforms. It works on Mac OS, iOS, Windows, and even on the web. And everything is updated immediately everywhere as soon as it's modified. So if you're on a team, Text Expander will also change your life leaving more time for what you do best. So you got to check this out. Go to textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more. Our thanks to Smile and Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. The right hire is perhaps the most important decision you can make for your business, especially for your small business, where each person makes up that much more of your team. And that's why... Our second sponsor here, LinkedIn.com slash SBS, is where you want to go when you are ready to make that next hire. Why LinkedIn? Because that's where everybody is. 70% of the U.S. workforce is on LinkedIn. No other job boards can say that, right? Because people use LinkedIn whether or not they're looking for a new job. Everybody keeps their stuff updated on LinkedIn. You post your status updates there. We post new episodes of the small business show there, right? It's a social place for everyone. And LinkedIn not only knows where you're working, but LinkedIn knows all of your skills, right? So people who are qualified for your role and ready for something new are right there on LinkedIn. It's the best way to find the person who will help grow your business. And That's why a new hire is made every 10 seconds using LinkedIn, right? They've got that unfair competitive advantage because they have all the people, even the ones that aren't actively looking for a job. And sometimes, oftentimes, that's the best person for you. So go check it out. Hurry to LinkedIn.com slash SBS and you get $50 off your first job post. I will tell you, I have used LinkedIn jobs. I have used it to find people and it's possible to find someone for less than 50 bucks. So this might turn out to be free, but this is truly $50 off your first job post. So again, that's linkedin.com slash SBS to get $50 off your first job post terms and conditions apply. Of course, our thanks to LinkedIn for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, let, since you've been do, so, done so much business on eBay, if, if uh, I hear people talk a lot about, oh, I'm going to start an eBay this, I'm going to you know ramp up very quickly. Uh, what what advice can you give someone that's maybe just starting out with eBay? Uh, you know, h- how can they kind of 
I mean, you've got thousands, tens of thousands of reviews. How do they get started and build that trust? And, you know, everybody's in a hurry and they want to ramp up quickly. And I know there's some controls that eBay puts on new accounts. Um, what, what would your advice be for someone looking at that? I would say, you know, first you can build your feedback just by buying. I mean, you can get your first, you know, 10 or 20 reviews by, you know, buying products that are $5. And at least having some feedback up there will help. You know, it won't be that you have uh, seller feedback, but I think just in general, good feedback is a strong indicator. And then when you're selling stuff, you know, you have to start off small. I mean, don't expect to sell $1,000 items uh, for full value, you know, if you only have a few feedback. So I'd suggest, you know, selling items maybe just out of your house to build some reputation before you go all in on you know, some more expensive gear. And like you mentioned, kind of the restrictions, I, I know that I, it's hard to remember all of them on top of my head, but I think it's until you have 100 feedback, you have to wait uh, 21 days or until you have a positive, uh, positive review from the buyer until the funds are released. So that is an incredible challenge if you're trying to, you know, run a, a small business out of your house and you're waiting, you know, a month to get your cash back. So to that end, you know, maybe just starting off uh, small and selling some trinkets to build up your feedback past 100 and then you won't have to have that uh, pain of waiting for the cash for the whole month. Yeah, I wanna, that's true. I want to circle back to something you just said where, you know, you, you talked about or you, we asked you, how do you get to begin selling on eBay and your answer was buy first this is this is a tactic I've heard a lot of business owners do we did it actually when we moved you know we started 20 years ago with the Mac Observer and Backbeat Media on the web and when we moved into podcasting the first thing I did was I started buying ads on podcasts that we might want to rep and not only do you learn how the market works when you're buying things so that you know what as a seller you need to deliver to these buyers but you also gain some trust with eBay it's it's a very explicit thing with trust there but even in a market where there's not you know a, a public job or a public review system anything where you can you know spend a little bit of money that's a good way to get people to trust you so yeah, it, that's a that's a really smart way to do that. I, I didn't want you kind of glossed over it a little bit, and I think there's more to that than than just a, a quick mention. So I just I just wanted to shine a light there for a second. Yeah, that's a good point. Sense it can be translated to a lot of different business models. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let, let's talk about marketing. Go all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, l let's talk about marketing for a minute. For um, uh, sell your Mac. Are are you constantly pushing? people to uh, your eBay store or, I mean, does it depend on the channel that they're coming from? What, what, what kind of marketing do you guys do? What's worked best for you? So we basically do zero marketing on selling products. All our marketing is focused on buying. Oh, that's cool. And the reason is that eBay is a channel. They have, you know, half a billion eyeballs on there. So it's fairly easy for us to sell our products. We don't. We only run into many challenges. Uh, we're really just trying to, you know, get more products, um, you know, at the right price, and you know, by off offering a great value on our site, we want to be one of the top paying, you know, websites for Apple trade in, so that you know, not only are we trusted, we're actually offering a great value. So to that end, you know, most of our marketing has been investment in the website, uh, really in the SEO, the search engine optimization efforts. And you know, not that much uh, outside marketing these days. You know, initially when we started, we were in all the Apple publications, the MacWorld and MacLife, and doing the MacWorld Expo and stuff like that. But we have not really invested in many uh, marketing channels like that as of late. Yeah. That uh, makes sense. So your focus really is when somebody's coming in, they're doing a search uh, and trying to find, okay, you know, trade in my Mac or trade in my, you know, iPad, trying to draw those customers into your website and uh, get them to, to online. They're searching for exactly what they want to do. And, you know, we're popping up the number one in the world for a lot of these, you know, Apple or Mac related searches. And if you search for sell my Mac and we're, we're number one, so that just drives a ton of traffic our way. I'll bet. Do you use an outside uh, SEO company to help you do that kind of stuff? Or are you doing that yourself or someone in-house? 
So it's not necessarily in-house, but a very um, close person to the business. Our webmaster helped us out with that, you know, as we got started. And, you know, he has done a lot of research in his past on SEO. And it really begins at the core of the website. Um, it's certainly uh, content-driven. You know, we have these Mac guys that help uh, deliver a lot of different search terms and stuff like that. Um, and only as of late have I reached out to a SEO-specific firm and now we have a little bit more of a tight strategy on our, our focus on how we're going to grow that market. That's great. So let's now we've talked about all the good stuff and things are going great. Let's talk about struggles. Um, you know, what's been the biggest struggle for sell your Mac and, and what steps have you taken to, to overcome it, to grow your business? Tough question, you know, uh, one of the struggles is growing the right team of people. And I, I love my team and I would bring on everyone again in a heartbeat, but managing is not one of the, uh, the traits I was gifted with. I'm really great at attracting people, but my heart does not want to manage and hold people accountable. So <laughs> That's a very good thing to, to admit right there. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of because I wear, wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm just so passionate about people. I mean, I, I want everyone to win, but I, I don't always uh, want to hold their feet to the fire to do it. Yeah. So how do you, how do you deal with that? that? I, I, yeah. I ask as, as, as a fellow not want to be manager, but stuck in that position because I don't want to be managed. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I think one of the ways I've overcome that is trying to learn how individual team members operate in terms of their style of learning and how they work so we can better mesh together and then we don't have to have any you know, conflict around uh, holding each other accountable and kind of be on the same page. And there's a lot of different tools out there that, you know, companies use to figure out their people. And the one that I've liked is called Culture Index. And you basically answer two different questions. Each one has maybe a hundred check boxes. It takes about five minutes. And the, the people that facilitate the culture index, they can read you just from those two questions. And it really describes you know, all your different kind of attributes and styles quickly. And then, you know, looking, com comparing that uh, to one another, you can see how, you know, you can meet in the middle and understand how uh, people are going to work and how to, how to make the best out of the work environment. Oh, that's some great advice. Thanks, yeah, man. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's a first, that's a first on the show. We'll definitely uh, be, be pushing that. That's fantastic. Um, okay. So talking about struggles and everything, uh, if you've listened to this show before, you know, we're big fans of mistakes and I'm making the fancy quote signs in the air here. Um, since they teach us so much, what's been the best quote signs again, mistake that you've made with your business that you've learned the most from? I don't know if I'd call it the best, you know, I've made a, a bunch of mistakes along the way. And I, I think as long as you have a really great learning opportunity, it hopefully makes a mistake a lot less expensive than it really is. And I think our kind of our biggest mistakes, uh, when we were the victim of fraud at, at multiple points in the past. Oh. And I, I understand how fraud works at such a deeper level. Now I could probably write a book on how you could fraud someone online that I never would um, because our business gets frauded constantly. We have about one to two frauds a day. Wow. Whoa. And now this is people is trying nuts. to sell you computers fraudulently or buying fraudulently? On both ends. Both? Huh. Wow. It's on both ends. I mean, people try to send in items that are, you know, fake items and say they had the most expensive MacBook Pro in the world. People buy items, they strip out parts and try to return it, send, send back empty boxes, you know, buy stuff with fake credit cards. You know, there's so many different ways these frauds happen. So yeah. I think just learning on how to protect ourselves from the frauds, um, you know, has been one of my biggest learning experiences and most expensive mistakes. You know, we, we've had a couple uh, very large scale frauds that we've uh, taken the people to court and actually won. Um, but unfortunately have not been able to collect due to them being abroad and fleeing the country. Wow. Yeah. I, I think that so, uh, yeah. also goes to your, um, from what I gather, your personality style 
and Dave's as well as probably mine is where you're trying to, you know, you believe in people, you're giving everybody the benefit of the doubt and it, it does open yourself <laughs> too, up. Too true. Yeah. You, you, all of a sudden you're like, wait, why would anybody do this? You know? And um, so, okay. It, it brings up a good point. Very interesting. Yeah. That, that trust. And I think as a business owner, you have to have that trust, especially when you're hiring people and you're giving them autonomy and things, but it can, it can, you know, bite you in the rear. Um, Talk about this fascinating to me, uh, and, and I'm not going to hardware geek out too much, but so someone puts in the information on your website, I'm sending you this very expensive high-end MacBook Pro or, or whatever it is, and you mm-hmm. get it. Uh, how do you combat the he said, she said where, oh, I sent you this thing, and then you open it up and there's, you know, uh, an old, you know, uh, in, Indigo <laughs> MacBook in there or something that, that you know, how do you guys deal with that? the mac would be happy <laughs> yeah usually it's something uh <laughs> like a brick <laughs> more recent ones we got um we received was a box of refrigerator hoses oh, oh. And they had quoted out um a four thousand uh, dollar mac on our website so so cases like this you know we use fedex for all our shipping and they have been a, a really great partner there are so many scans of that package along the way that you can go back on the history and kind of prove that it wasn't what the person said it was there's pictures at the drop-off location uh you know there's photographs of the package as it goes along the belts so you can kind of see if it's been tampered with ahead of time a lot of times it's not even the, not even close to the right weight of what the package should be. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times too, the, the person, you know, if it's a first time seller and they're trying to sell you a, a crazy high end computer, well, a lot of times they wouldn't even have the serial number for what the computer was. Um, or if they did their, their backstory doesn't make sense. We go back and forth on these emails a lot of times about stuff like this, and you know, kind of the ultimate level is bringing in the security team from FedEx. They have some like ex FBI guy there, and he'll sniff these guys out and you know kind of prove that it's fraud. Uh, and usually, when you start you know threatening the fraudulent people that you're going to take them to court, usually they kind of just back off and go away. Right. What a what a waste of time though. I mean, it, like the the fact oh. that you have to think about how to make that process as efficient as possible is um, is unfortunate, right? But that's, I guess that's just part of what you have to do. <laughs> if these fraudsters could just do something good with their brains, they probably could have made the I, same amount of money in the same amount of time. That's the thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Crime pays, but, but so does not crime. So yeah, you could make some money. Yeah. There is ethical hacking. You get paid for it. Right, right. Exactly. Well, it's it's called, yeah. I mean, it's what we all do. You start a business, you find an opportunity that's that someone else is not cashing in on or and and you and you do. And that that's not illegal. That's how it works. It's all okay. Yep. Just get creative and, and do it the right way. Oh man, it's funny. Yeah. That's for sure. Anyone, anyone too good of ideas on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I I think there's also uh you know, what, what we found is taking in large volumes and most of our stuff was coming from corporate and educational and uh, leasing companies and that kind of thing. So you're getting in, you know, thousands and thousands of Macs or iPads or, or phones is it's just there's also this big factor is that people and, and often don't know what they're doing. They're just inept. So what they said was coming, uh, or you get a manifest and you're like, well, wait, this is totally different. Then you have to fight that battle, uh, to show that this is actually what showed up. And, you know, we, we took to, you know, we had to, the cameras in our warehouse so you could see and unwrapping pallets and that kind of stuff that it was original. Um, so I could, I, uh, I empathize with the challenge that you just talked yeah. about for sure. Had to go back to our 4K cameras to prove exactly what the product was we opened up, but you know, we definitely do a very full scale audit yeah. on any of the large purchases we make, and I would say maybe 50 percent of the companies get 90 percent of the stuff right. And you know, it's not a very high likelihood they're going to send what they say, and it's not that they're not trying to send the right product; they might just not have the the system and processes to be able to know exactly what the item is. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good point. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't, don't want to spend too much time on this thing. We can have an off <laughs> off air talk about this for hours <laughs> over a beer. Sometime. Um, so l- let me ask you this. Uh, 
uh, what are you what are your plans for the future? Are you uh, you can expand and and grow, sell your Mac? I mean, you know, growth can be expensive. Uh, or are you happy kind of the size you are now? What what's what's the future hold for you guys? I'm never happy with the size that we are. You know, we've always been a growth company. You know, it started out the the first uh, first full year was about three hundred thousand dollars in sales. Last year we did a little over five million, and this year we're going to do over ten million. That's, That's awesome. Great. So really focusing on the growth front. Yeah. Thank you. And my vision is to be to 50 to 100 million in the next five to 10 years. That's awesome. That's a lot great. of more organic growth ahead, a lot more focus on the B2B market and stuff like that. Um, and you're right. It's very expensive to grow. All our cash is tied up in the business. Yeah. So even though we're profitable, there's not much profit to go around. Yeah, it's always a challenge. You think, wow, look at all this money we're making. <laughs> so where is it? <laughs> you know, it's out in the warehouse. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, inventory, inventory business is challenging. So, okay, got so it. we've got uh, thousands of small business owners that are listening to you right now. And, you know, it sounds like you've you know had a, a, you've got a great business, been successful, profitable, have a great team around you. If you could offer your single best piece of advice to these folks uh, about running a small business, what would it be? I'm going to go back a little bit to what I uh, said earlier about when you have to kind of go all in on the business. And it's kind of the pig headed discipline and determination for success. You know, you're not going to find overnight success and be a millionaire in your third month of your business unless you're just the luckiest person alive. So, really being prepared to work, you know, 14 to 18 hour days for the first few years of the business to get it off the ground and surpass the competition to have a realistic chance of success. And That's those great. years are a real struggle. And you're know, looking back, I didn't have, you know, a family, wife and kids at the time. And I, I think that would be incredibly uh, more challenging to try to pull those kind of hours uh, with the family around you. So I'm glad that I was, you know, single at the time and could invest, you know, virtually my entire life in the business. I, I eat, slept and breathed at Slayer Mac. You know, if you ask my parents uh, when they tell me to invite me over for dinner, I couldn't even show up within an hour of being on time because I'm just so busy. I forget everything else going on in the world. So it's kind of shutting everything out else out, focusing, needing that discipline, determination to keep driving forward, uh, no matter if you're having a good day or not. Yeah. yeah. Bullheaded persistence takes sacrifice for sure. That's just yeah, how it be goes. Prepared. Yeah. Be prepared for the grind, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that is true. Well, that's awesome. So, uh, what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about sell your Mac brand? I think we lost him. You might have lost them. Brian, wait, I can tell you right now, just go to sellyourmac.com. Uh, you can learn more about the company. They've got just a fantastic uh, model there to walk you through selling product and learning more about them. And we really appreciate you coming on the show, Brian. I'm sorry we lost you in the last uh, minute here. Uh, and, hey, I got uh, you back. Oh, hey, there you are. Back. Having me. All right. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, I just pointed everybody to sellyourmac.com. Is that the best place for them to learn more about what you guys do? Absolutely. You go to our website, you can find us on Facebook under Sell Your Mac and also on uh, LinkedIn and Instagram. Perfect. Well, thanks very much for uh, coming on the show. We look forward to uh, watching your continued growth. Thanks. Hope that helps a few people out there. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Keep living that charm life.